Welcome back to another Piware Solutions tutorial. Today we're working with the free Piware refresher tutorial that's on my uh, website and I've shared over Facebook. There are many different versions of it. There's a version 10, uh, 9, 8, and 7. Uh, so make sure you grab whichever one is for your version. Um, and maybe if you have some of the older versions, hopefully those, uh, those work for you. But I do know that it was created on version 10 and should work on version 9 and 10 uh, pretty well. So uh, grab that, download it, grab a cup of coffee, and if you want a, a refresher course on some of the basic functions and a couple extra assignments at the end for exporting your files and creating PDFs, uh, it's a great little refresher course if you're um, just getting into drill design or maybe you're a band director with the uh, software and you just want to make sure that you know how to use the basic functions. It's just a little free tool, click point to point, uh, super simple way to um, you know get, get refreshed on how it all works. So grab a cup of coffee and hop right in. Now I'm assuming that you have a working knowledge uh, of Piware, maybe you've took my tutorial, maybe you just checked out some tutorials on YouTube uh, of mine or somebody else's and you've just dabbled into the software. So some of the things that you see today may be a bit more advanced than you're ready for. Um, if they are, then you know, pause, go back, check things out on my website, maybe even uh, go to drilldesignsolutions.com and sign up for my, uh, my Udemy uh, tutorial series, it's $19.99. It takes about an hour and a half, um, a little bit more if you do all the assignments that go along with it, and you can really get a good workflow going for you. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is open up the file. It pulls up right here. And you'll see a whole lot of stuff on the screen. Okay, the drill information pops up. Uh, this is my website, drilldesignsolutions.com. Feel free to contact me if you wanna just chat about drill, you have a problem with, with Piware, or you need some help, or if you're a band director and you want to collaborate on a, a show. All right, so you can see the, uh, we've got the, the stadium already set up for you there. I got my custom logo on there. Um, if you look in the file and the document options, you can see how to do that for yourself uh, if you wanted to, um, you know, even play around with that. But this uh, document is designed for you know quite a few things uh, to review and as we go through it you'll see um, you know kind of step by step you, you get a lot of stuff out of these 15 pages plus some of these extra tabs here at the bottom so you want to start on page one and I'm just going to kind of quickly go through this so it doesn't take all day um, if you need to uh, you know pause go back and listen um, you're more than welcome uh, to do that Okay, so let's start on page one. Let's get started by creating some performers. We obviously don't have any performers, so uh, we're gonna start by selecting our line tool right here and click on the click one point and click on the click two point. As it says, it pops up with 25 performers at a two-step interval. We'll just keep that. That'll be a good uh, 25 people to start with, except, okay? Uh, we're gonna make them some people just to kind of review uh, um, using the visuals editor, okay? So we can either uh, already select like this, select our line, or you can, sometimes you can just double click the, uh, the arrow cursor tool and it, and it does it. I'm gonna click right here on the visuals editor, uniform and equipment tab on the side. I'm gonna click brass and change mine to trumpet. If you'd like to change yours to a different instrument, that is fine. And then click the X in the upper right hand corner. Good review of how to use that. You look on your uh, real view now you should see uh, some trumpet players there all in a row okay all right we've got our performers created now let's go to page two see it says down here when you have finished click page uh, tab number two so always reminding you do everything in this box first before you go to this box okay and this is just kind of a an, an intro and talks a little bit about my tutorials and other stuff that I've already covered all right, so take some time to read that. Uh, page two, all right. Uh, we're gonna review how to use the block tool, okay? So select your line. Uh, your block tool's up here, okay? Click the block drawing tool, click on click one, click two, 
and click three, you'll notice it puts up a two by two, so it's way too many dots for what we have. So we gotta go tell it um, the intervals we want. So we're gonna change the top interval to four. I'm gonna change bottom interval to eight. Okay, and that's gonna uh, round us out to a four front to back and an eight left to right. Total position of 25. Um, I have them pasted correctly, it looks good. Uh, of course, if you needed to, you could always clear this and change uh, you know, click on your guys and, and change their pathways, who's going where. But for right now, everything looks to be uh, to be set. So we're going to click Accept. Now we've got a, a good 12 count move uh, where we can see that we go from a line to a block. All right, fantastic. Let's move on. Okay, the resize editor. All right, so as we always do on every page, select all your performers. Okay, and then we're going to click up here. This is called the Resize Editor uh, tool. Okay, we want to make sure uh, that we select Stretch right here, super important, and drag this corner over to this corner. Okay, and then I added an extra little uh, thing here because you can always do this with your arrow keys. I'm gonna arrow down eight times, so float it forwards eight steps. Five, six, seven, eight. So now, not only does it condense, but it also uh, goes forward eight steps, all in one motion. Hit accept, and you've got a nice uh, con condensed uh, way to condense forms, kind of a, a review of that, and how to float across the field, okay? Let's go on to page four. Time to rotate some guys, all right? So as we do on every page, select your performers if they're not already selected. Okay, I'll select mine. I'm going to go to the Rotate tool. It's right here. It's a circle with an arrow. Okay, and now you can drag handles if you want, or if you know what you want, you just type like 45 degrees. It'll just do a little rotation. Now what you'll notice after you accept this is that some of these guys aren't on the grid. And if you wanted to do like a 3x3 three three rise over run, you've got to um, get these guys on the grid. An easy way to do that is the Snap To feature. Uh, which is edit snap to, but I've already tried it and sometimes it, it defaults some people down and some people up and it doesn't necessarily always work. So we're gonna do it a different way, okay? We're gonna do the uh, resize editor again and select scale. And all you really gotta do is just drag this corner right here, boom. And now if you look, you can see over three, up three, over three, up three, they're all on the grid. It looks nice. So that's a, a kind of a little, just a little thing that I always do um, that, you know, to make sure they're on the grid. Now I added another extra step before you're done. Arrow over eight steps. And not only will it rotate, but it will float across the field all in one motion. Okay, so now we're located, centered on the 50. All right, let's go on to page, page tab five, where we're going to do a little bit of gluing and uh, knifing, okay? So we're gonna start by selecting our performers. We got them selected anyway, but we can do that again. Okay, click the knife tool. Looks like a knife. Hit this guy, regroup all. Now, none of these guys are connected, so we're gonna pick a different order for them. Starting here on the leftmost point, and then we'll glue towards the 50. And then follow the arrows, come back here, glue towards the 50. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Um, I, I tried to do the clicks on here, so if you're counting uh, 14, 15, back here, click 16, that's why I got that on there. Oh, see, I already messed up. Undo knife, there we go. Sometimes it's hard to see when I make the tutorial, you can see the arrows kind of get in the way of whether you did it or not. Okay, and now we are glued together in a brand new order, ready to move to page tab six where we are going to go to a curvilinear form. Okay, I'm already selected. If you're not selected, make sure you select your performers. Click the curve tool, and it looks like this. It has a bunch of curves around it. Don't get it confused with the arc tool. That's different, okay? Curve, and go through the click points again. Click one, click two, click three, and click four, right inside the boxes. Okay, and because we glued and pasted them together on the on the previous set, uh, they should animate correctly. Okay, so we're just gonna hit accept. It's a good interval, about 
uh, 2.8, you know, three step interval, open interval looks good. And you'll watch it float and it'll kind of pull apart, you know, every, every, every line. And then they connect at the ends. All right, so now you got a nice curvilinear form. Of course, in your own writing, um, you can create forms, you know, curvilinear forms, many different ways. Curves and BZA tool. You can use, um, you know, you can even just use the morph editor, and you can you can do lots of different things. Okay, but that's just one way to do it. Okay, let's move on to page seven, and now we're gonna we're gonna use that arc tool that I just told you about. We'll select our performers. They should be all pasted together again. Arc tool, you always uh, set your endpoints. So click on the three points. This is the endpoint here and endpoint here. And then you select your depth here. And there you go. Now you've got a nice arc through these points. And the pathway should be good. The interval should be about the same as it was in the previous set. In your own writing, you'll probably want to set your interval and keep it pretty consistent page to page um, so that, you know, it. it has a similar look and it's easy to clean and that sort of thing. Okay, so we're going to accept that. It looks good. Okay. Now you'll notice that even after you accept it, that you know some people won't be on the the thing you clicked on, but um, you know, and those points, you'll have that that the depth where you wanted it. Okay. Let's move to page eight. Okay. Page eight is going to be kind of a combination page. We're going to knife and glue first and then use the line tool to separate every other person into two lines. Okay, So select all your performers as the box says. Uh, select your knife tool. And then there's this little guy right here, apply pattern. And there's different patterns you can pick. Uh, you can do three, you know, so it makes it into three lines, four lines, or uh, every two people. We're going to do A, B. We're going to apply the pattern, click apply pattern, enter yes, it will regroup the performers, that's okay. And now you can see that, that every other performer is glued together. It's a good time-saving device uh, in here. Okay, so now we're going to, um, I just clicked off of it, and then I'm going to go back and click on the leftmost performer, like it says, and that's these guys. And you can notice that it's every other performer now. Okay. I'm going to click my line tool because I'm going to create the form they're moving to. Click one, click two. You'll notice it's at a three step interval. Good to keep kids on the grid. Okay, and then it says select the other line that we haven't moved yet. And we're going to cover them down eight steps in front of that line. Okay, so we clicked three, we clicked four. Three step interval. Things look Good, and you can see that animating properly. Every other person pulls out of the form, and it creates a nice cover down. All right. All right, let's go ahead and do some more knife tool, knife glue tool. In your own writing, you're going to want to make sure to keep these things properly glued uh, on each page. It really will save a lot of time in the end. Um, when you're, if you ever have to rewrite or do things, having them glued together on each page and, and properly pasted will really help. Okay, so I talked through doing that, so let me do this again. Okay, I've got my two lines, select them, click on the glue tool. Okay, we're going to click one here and click two here. Now the lines are connected again. Okay, I'm going to accept that and we're ready for page tab 10. Okay. We are going to use the circle tool, okay? And the circle tool is quite simple. You set the center of the circle, and then you set the circle edge. So with our performers selected, click on the circle tool. You're going to set this, the center of the circle here, and then the edge of the circle, uh, or the, the width of the circle here, okay? And of course, our pathways are good. I you know went through and, and made sure that the, we wouldn't have to do too many um, pathway changes in this tutorial or this refresher okay so now we open up to a circle as you can see good good I'm going to move on and uh, get the knife glue tool again select your performers and this is going to be kind of a, a, a double a double thing we're going to start with knife and then end with glue so knife we're going to click here on this performer and click here on this performer. 
So we cut these guys apart. I'm going to go here um, to glue. And then click here and then click here as the arrow tells us. So now we've got what looks kind of like a, a fancy S. I'm going to click accept. And now we're ready to move to our next page. All right, we're going to do the curve tool again. Okay, curve tool. Select our performers as we do on every page. Click the curve drawing tool and, and, and then do your clicks. Here's click number one. Here's two. Here's three. It's kind of a, there's a little bit of a busy page here. Click four. Click five. And then we're going to go here to six. Now this might be weird because there's a performer sat right here. So you may need to click next to it and then drag into it. Sometimes when there's a performer right where you need to go, you have to do that. Okay, so now we have kind of a, an S curve, if you will, right here on the 50. Accept. And you'll notice, like I said in the previous sets, that there is no, uh, sometimes there are no you know, performers right on the spot that you clicked, and that's okay. Because it's keeping the interval consistent between the endpoints. Okay, almost there. Stay with me. Page 13. Select your performers, and because they're glued and pasted correctly, you can click this follow the leader guy, and our leader is already here. And he's going to go down here to this click number one spot. Okay. Uh, if you wanted the follow the leader to go the other way, you would click on this, and this guy would be the leader. Okay. But we're going to have him over here, and we're going he's going to follow down to here, and we're going to click accept. Okay, and now you'll notice all the performers follow around the form. Okay, it's a great tool to use um, to create, you know, create motion and, and consistent step size for all performers. Um, you know, and it animates it correctly you know, with the curved path. So uh, when you do show it to the kids, they can watch it move. All right, here we go. Two more pages. Now okay, we're going to move into the polygon. I'm going to do with a polygon tool. Okay. I believe this is included. Uh, if it's not, you could make a, a circle. Um, but I know in one of my other tutorials, I did the spiral drawing tool. And then somebody said, yeah, I didn't have the spiral tool. So pretty sure the polygon is. If it's not, again, you could use uh, the same method with the circle drawing tool, where you click, you set the center. Okay, and then you set the edge. Okay, and then it should fold into a good, you know, the pathway should be good to fold into a polygon. Click accept. Okay, so if we do that, we can see. You know, now the drill that we're writing is not necessarily meant to be something that you know flows super well between. Uh, between pages, just because we're trying to use as I was trying to use as many tools as I could, you know, throw out there. Okay. All right, and then let's do 15. 15, we're gonna uh, use, you know, a, co a commonly used tool uh, in in drill writing or you know a bit of motion, which is called floating. You can create the form, float the form. So we're gonna select our polygon, all our performers here, and we are going to. Uh, use this guy right here, the push editing tool, and you can make use of your keyboard if you'd like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Float them to the 50, and you can float them back field 8 steps and center it like it says. So 12 over, 8 back. Now, technically, you could uh, do this with your mouse as well. Just grab any performer and then just move them, and you can move it wherever. So you could also just drag if you'd like, and then hit accept. Okay. And now you can see the polygon floats across the field. All right. Now I've got some extra little bits here. If you've forgotten some things about um, uh, labeling and PDFs and some other stuff. So if you'd like to take the time to do that, I'll walk through that now. If you don't want to do the uh, assignment A, B, C, and D, that's fine. But for band directors, it really would be a good practice because... For uh, you know, many band directors, they're going to get a drill file. Maybe they need to edit it a little bit or print you know, some more charts, print some more coordinates. So these are actually pretty good little things to do. Okay. So if you need to change a label or add a label, you're going to select your performers. We're going to make these guys all trumpets. 
I'm going to go to the label tool. And I like to do uh, the label where the letter is in it. So like trumpets would be T1 or TP1. Okay, and if you hit plus, it should uh, reproduce them all the way around the form to the end um, with the number. So it just counts up for you all the way around to T25. Okay, and of course, if you want to change that, you can change that. And another way to do it too is you can glue and knife them, uh, cut them and, and paste them together exactly the order you want. And then you just, again, would label the first one and hit plus. Okay? And name, I always like to put the instrument in the name category and then hit repeat because on the coordinate card, it'll say T1 trumpet. If you put nothing there, it'll just say T1. Um, you know, and that could be trombone one or tenor one. So it's nice to have uh, the, the, uh, the instrument up there as well when you're sorting those and getting them out to the kids. Okay? Great, let's do assignment B. Assignment B talks about the production sheet. Uh, I'll just talk about that briefly and show you what you can do. Um, this says, um, just consider this whole movement is in 4-4 four, four time, okay? So uh, the first set, of course, is an opening set. There's no measures here. Uh, the second set would be a 12 count move. So that would be measures one, two, and three. So I always put, I'll put in the, um, in the measure category, I'll put in, you know, one dash three. Okay, the next set, you, you can double click that. You can select this and get rid of it. So that would be measures four, five, six, and seven. Four dash seven. Okay, and you can go through and fill these in. And then at the end, if you did it right, the last 12 count moves should be measure 41 through 43, if my counting is correct. Okay, and then also I like to add in on mine, um, just info about what's going on, you know? So for this, um, I would put all performers will we can move 16. Some people like, um, reshape 16 or, or, or float 16. They like to use uh, terminology like that, um, which is fine, you know? And then if you want, even you can add extra information. So you can say, um, form condenses and, um, and floats forward at the same time. And that can be some extra extra useful info. You know, stay covered. <laughs> and you hit OK. And you'll notice that's right there. Now, why is this important? Well, when you do your drill uh, PDF later, all of this information will be at the very bottom of the page. And it'll be great for you or for whoever you're writing this for to uh, relay this information to their kids. Super important stuff. Okay, I'm not going to fill in the rest of this. I just had that in there. When you're done, all you do is Click that pin and it goes back over to the side here. You can always access it there and look. Okay, good, good. Let's move on to exercise or assignment C. Create coordinate sheets. Now, I do this differently than a lot of people. I do file, print, and I never use this print feature. I go straight to either print charts or print coordinates. I've had the best luck with um, the amount of menus and things going on. I just like to do them separately. So I print the coordinates. It'll ask you to save. Yep, you can save. Then you can go through here and edit your terminology. Some people like side A or side B um, or side one or side two, um, inside, outside, or behind, in front, uh, little things like that that you can change. And you can save them as your defaults. Really important to do, and you don't have to do it next time. I like a quarter card size. It has four on a page, saves a lot of time, and we print ours on cardstock and laminate them so the kids don't, um, so they, they last the season. Print preview, you can go check it out. Okay, I'll zoom in here and show you a little bit about what we did. Okay, so we've got, there it is, there's our, um, our label, our performer. Uh, there, there are symbols X, label T, T1, T2, and then it says performer trumpet, which was really nice. Um, also has the, the title and all that good stuff. Okay, looks good to me. Close, and then always use save as PDF. Even if you're on a Mac, don't do print and then print to PDF. I found that that's not as good. Okay, and you can, you can title it whatever you want. Free 
uh, Pyware, Refresher, Coordinates, Save, and then it'll uh, export them. And then you just hit close here once it's done and you head back. And we got one more assignment and that's gonna be similar to what you just did. Uh, we're gonna print uh, drill chart PDFs because it's important for everybody to know how to do that. You may be a director literally that only uses Pyware to print <laughs> or make files. So print, I go to print charts. And I have all my stuff kind of saved in here, the instructions. I like to have the performer label, prop covers, floor covers, text boxes. Um, you can have the printer performers all printed in black. That's a good thing to do if you get a really colorful file um, because uh, for printing it really helps. But here's what you really need. Production sheet notes and you can have that put at the bottom. And then you can change the, the, um, the font size. Really important stuff. You can check to make sure it looks the way you want it to look. Print preview. I've even added my logo here, which in your own writing, you can just uh, have the information there. Um, you can see that some of the things are a little bit big and the, and the, the uh, labels are, are crowding. You can go back, highlight these and have half of them go up, half of them go down, um, or make them smaller, that sort of thing. But this looks like a you know, looks good, looks like we did it. Looks like our information was there at the beginning. We've got our, our opening set when we type that into the production sheet. There's the info we put into the production sheet, move, move 12 to the block, we wrote that in. Um, we wrote the form condenses, floats forward and stay covered. It's nice to have all that in the um, production sheet so that it shows up at the bottom, okay? And you don't have to rely on text boxes uh, that won't change every time that you uh, maybe make a, a change in the page tabs or do anything like that. Okay? Plus it takes up this nice white space at the bottom of the uh, paper and it's really, really clear where to look for information. Okay? All right. And then you can hit save as PDF. I always go to where I did my coordinates and then I just change coordinates to drill. Oh. And then I hit save and it'll export. And then once that kind of pops back up, you just hit close. And you've taken a Pyware refresher course. Congratulations. If you go look at your files here, you got your refresher course coordinates. They look great. You've got your refresher course drill. It looks great. Look at that. Beautiful. There's all the awesome work you did. And of course, this is 25 performers. If you had 125 or 225 in your band, you would be probably mixing and matching a lot of these tools all on one page. Some people would be in a block, some people would be in a curvilinear form, or you know, half a form would be following the leader while the other half is pushing or floating, whatever it might be. Okay? But mastering and knowing how to create forms and how to do it quickly is an important skill to learn. Okay? And keeping it organized with that knife and glue tool so that if you do have to make adjustments, it's not terribly challenging to do. Again, as I said at the beginning, if you feel a bit lost still, uh, even with this refresher course, please, please, please uh, you know, contact me if you want some extra help or you have a question, or if you want to just uh, you know, get a link to my tutorial series had a lot of people take it, got a really high ratings, and people are really enjoying it. If you like this content, please make sure that you like and subscribe to my channel and my, my website and Facebook. Pass it along to anybody you think that it would be helpful for. And if you ever need to or ever want to collaborate on a marching band show or a drill, please don't hesitate to contact me uh, through my website or email uh, or Facebook, however it might be. I would uh, love to collaborate with you in the future. Take care.